uh, my screen is visible, right? Thanks. Give me some confirmation. Okay, great. So uh, today I'm going to show you how you can build ADAPT from back into front end for connection with a sample calculator uh, example. So uh, we're going to do this step using the Beaker framework, this is any framework built by Algorand. So before Beaker, uh, developers used to build contracts with Python uh, or the main language Algorand use with is Teal, a low level language named Teal, but uh, PyTeal and this speaker are like wrapper. Uh, at the end, they transfer your code to Teal and they will feed that to the, the algorithm blockchain. But uh, anyway, uh, PyTeal was used before Beaker. Uh, Python, in Python, when you, in Python, uh, you coders or developers used to code manually in every de deployment code they have to write manually one by one, uh, but, but with Beaker, all those hard work or all those uh, codes, you don't have to write those things because already when you install Beaker, it will cover most of the part. You don't have to write the deploying code. Uh, Beaker already covered that. So all you have to do is just focus on writing the contract. So I found uh, Beaker to be more time action. So uh, I'm going to show you how you can use this framework to build your uh, contract and plus Beaker also has an option to install React for the front end. So uh, it just makes a lot of things much easier. So we need to see it one by one. So just to tell you about to Beaker, just a small introduction to Beaker, the framework for building smart contracts using PyTeal language. Uh, Beaker is designed to simplify writing, testing, and deploying a smart contract all in one. Uh, so it's designed for that purpose. So like I said, it simplifies the development of decentralized applications on the algorithm blockchain, enabling developers to focus on building innovative applications rather than dealing with low-level length programming complexities. So it just uh, much, uh, it, 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 it makes your job much easier, just you have to focus on the idea of your application instead of just uh, focusing on the background, on the backend, or on the label language of the because, like I told you, before Vika was created, developer used to do all those uh, hard tasks building the deployment, the label language using TL. So Vika uh, shortcuts, all those are working, and so you have to focus only on your application or your creativity on the application. So it's a, it's a very powerful tool for developers we need to leverage the features of Algorand and building scalable and simple apps. So to install the installation, these are the installation we go through. So the first two requirements that should exist in your machine would be to have a Python 3.8 above uh, this version, above this version or this one. Uh, Docker, I'm gonna, we're gonna see this part with Docker for Linux framework for Windows users or for, for those of you who use, uh, who use Windows, I have put a YouTube video how you can install it on your Windows machine. Mm, it, so uh, you can see that video, but on Linux it's much, much easier using Docker. And you have to have this tool also, PTX. So we have used this for the readers for last week. So I'm sure all of you already have this one. And you have to have Git. So all you have to do is to install this Beaker, first install the algo kit, and you can check the versions, then you have to do algo kit. So I guess you can see one thing you can create. One application here. So you all you have to do is, I've already installed the algo kit, so I'm just gonna start with algo in so I'm going to show you both the backend and the frontend how you can do this here. So for the backend, just install the big to the bigger one, and again for the frontend, go to the React part and install the React part. Uh, so I'm we we're gonna see the how we can install the bigger framework for for the contract. 
but the same thing you have to do for the front end to even install the React from the bigger framework through this one right too. So I'm going to show you the bigger one. So name your directory or the name of your project. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry guys, I lost my connection for it. Uh, I think uh, I stopped on the installation part, right? Sorry again. I'm going to repeat it, my connection. Okay, so while we wait for this one, just click the start package. Uh, then you give it your email something. I'm just saying, yes, most of them, yes, okay. Yeah. Okay, yes, if you want to use TypeScript, also you can have option for that. I'm going to use Python, so just this one will create you the backup framework. So, okay, uh, here uh, you have the option to run your backend or to in this that flow board, so you can test your backend code uh, before you integrate it to your uh, front end. So to do that, you can run this local net start, and if you want to start that local net start. So the purpose of local net, uh, there's a document. You just open, then you created folder here. So everything is here. The deployment, all you have to do is uh, on the Slack workshop, create a new folder for a special app. Now we are gonna see how we can do the calculator on the algorithm blockchain, a simple calculator. So. Just create here, you can say calculator. 
me go here. So write your code here, your contract here, and just run like any other Python code. Run Python calculator.py, and it will generate you the artifacts that uh, that, that is needed to uh, that is needed to connect your application with blockchain. So. Uh, it's simple like this because that in the first, in the former time, every code here you see here, developer had to manually write it to, to find this artifact files. But with Beaker, uh, you don't have to do that. On the, only, the only thing you have to do is run this code, uh, run this particular file name, and it will break your, it will deploy it immediately. Every deployment, everything has been uh, com combined in this particular folder. So I'm gonna just remove this one and then continue with the flight. So the local net is has the same functionality has like sandbox, but this is uh, you have you this algo kit like I told you it's a recently created functionality of Algorand. Before algo kit or because they used to uh, before algo kit local net they used to use sandbox to test their data application in your local host machine. So uh, they can, you can use them interchangeably. So either you can use sandbox or local need, you, you get the same functionality. Uh, so they have the same function. They have the plan to just move entirely to local need for the future. They want to remove uh, using sandbox entirely uh, in the near future. So uh, right now you can use them interchangeably with each other. So for this job, we can use local need. And the Argo Kit Explorer will open this uh, file for you, this uh, board, when you put that. Uh, and this one, we I'm going to show you, this is the code we are going to use for the integration between the backend and the React app. So we'll get back to that one. Later. And this is the artifact file. When you deploy your contract, these four files you're going to get. These are important files to have for the integration with the front end. So it's just a little definition of what they are. So the approval and the criteria are, uh, you can see the definition here. The approval criteria uh, specify the rule and conditions. So the contract, the whole purpose of contract is to write some contract uh, functionalities between the blockchain and the users, right? That's the whole point of contract. So the approval criteria cont contains all the rules and conditions that you put on the contract. It will be found in the approval token. So when you write the contract, you write it with Python, Python or Python language. But in approval till the all your contract that is written in Python will be transferred in the tips low level language format and it will be put on the approval token file. And the clean lurtil, the purpose is if you decide to remove your smart contract from the blockchain or close it, this is the file that you refer. Uh, and the contract.json contains the metadata information about the deployment, the deployed contract, and the application JSON is the same as the contract, but it has more additional data about your deployed contract. So basically, all these files contain information about your contract, and these files are the ones that you're going to use to connect with our draft flow or with our React. So this is the main purpose of after you write contract, the main purpose is creating these files. So we're gonna see how we're gonna create these files. Uh, this is just, uh, I think you already covered it with Intanon. I just put on the slide, just in case you need it, just to run your sandbox. It's a code you follow to transfer algos from one address to another. Just just uh, the code that you use in the morning tutorial. Uh, I have put some references here. Most of them are the Algorand uh, blockchain uh, in, in references. So uh, for the React, they have their own React tutorial on the Algorand documentation. So this is the reference for that. And this is the Beaker auction. This is sample example they have done. Uh, you can find this under this in the GitHub. Uh, Report organization. So uh, I would recommend you to check this out. It, it, it's the this bidding auction has used NFTs and everything like that for the one who the winner of the bid gets this NFT. So uh, there's a functionality how obtaining is made. 
how the integration with the React is made. So I would recommend to check that out. It can help you with your current project. Uh, whereas this is the videos of installation of AlgoKit on your system on both Mac, Linux, and Windows. Uh, uh, courses on PyTeal and uh, AlgoKit, I mean Bika. So uh, go through the references. So this is about the slide. So I guess we can move now to the application part. So I already built the application here. So I'm going to go through with you guys uh, what the code does. So in this is my Bicar framework. So in, under my smart contract, I have built, I have created this calculator folder. And under the calculator folder, I have put my contract here. So the contract is quite simple. The only thing that is doing is I have uh, assigned this global state value, value uh, in this class. And I'm this is the only global state value that I put it, the result, the result variable. So um, this is the add, the minus, and the which does. So add simply accepts two parameters and expects an output and just simply uh, add these values and it put the result under for on the state which means this one this is the state variable so it will call the state variable and assign the new uh, result of these two uh, added values into the state so every time the add value uh, the add function is called the state value will change and the same thing happened with the minus also i i can you can just assign as many variables as you want as a global or as a local state, that's your choice. But I'm just using this single uh, variable to assign it for both the uh, add or the minus value. So uh, again, when you subtract the value, the value will again replace the results, the, the current result value to the new uh, subtracted value. So this is uh, so um, what I could say. And the reject results function only reads this function, this variable. So basically, I'm calling this function to read it. What what's the current state or what is the current value of this result state variable, global state variable value? So it returns the output of the state value of result. So this is the function that the calculator has right now. Uh, add a minus. So I'm going to show you how this one works, and you can add. Uh, multiplication and division, and we see the process how it's done. So I already run my AlgoKit local next part. It's already running. Uh, so let's see first. Let's test the backend code before we connect it with the React app. So to connect your after you run AlgoKit local next part. All you have to do is come here, you come to this one. Let's just delete this one and see the process again. So you import your ABI meters, which means your ABI meter, you point of the JSON that you created when you run this one. Make sure you are your directory is under the calculator folder here. Under the smart contract, then the calculator folder, then call. Python do Python control do py for your contract like this. And when you click enter this one, it will create this article. So let's just delete this one and see when I run this one, it immediately creates the artifact folder. So that you have opened it, the application JSON, the approval key, click it, and you can to JSON. So to access these files on the DAFCO after you run algo kit start. Just find the folder on your system. That one, you see, click the control bridges. So it will move all my functions under all my function, everything in my contract. Here it will display it here. So if you are first, you have to test your function. Is the add or the minus working as it's supposed to? So to test that, you have to create an app. So the Duffalo wants you to create app so it can differentiate between different apps or different different contracts that are used in the Duffalo. So we differentiate uh, this one. 
to create an app ID in particular, so import your approval file. So again, go back to the file. Yeah. Okay, I'm on the wrong folder. Okay, so this one, that, please. I'll go back to it. For this one, can you do the same thing for the clear birthday? Well, it's Alexa, so the, we are only have one global stick for every the reason for every, so we just can assign one. Okay. Okay. So, it creates a new app ID, so this particular uh, contract in, inside the DAX flow is under this app ID, so no one can take this app ID for, from it. When I uh, go back to a access tensor 7 under my local hosts or my local net, it will fetch this contract. So, let's test it on the back end first. So, if we just see first what the value of the Global variable is now zero. On the add part, the Dapflow will give you uh, spaces for your variables to input a value, let's say 10, 5, and execute. It's 50. So if you now see the root result, it has to be 50. The same goes with the minus one. Four, sixteen. Now, since we're only using one uh, global state variable, this value will again will change to sixty. We are reassigning the result value, the result global state variable. So, this is how you test the backend. So, first, before you connect to the app, make sure on this DAFO everything is working as supposed to. The function are doing. Uh, your contracts are doing what are said, what what you want them to do. So after you check all this and everything is working fine, now we can connect it with our front end and see the connection there. So to connect our let's go to our front end uh, folder. So this folder is uh, I created like I showed you. I'll go in it and I choose the wrap part and I installed. Uh, this part like that. So, so this is how we install my React. So, for my React app to access the backend, uh, there's one thing I have to do on the backend. I have to create a client. Uh, I'll go it has an option for you to generate client. Uh, you can see it under the documentation. This one. Uh, Algorithm can let you generate a client. Uh, this client is it just combines the entire the backend the contract code and just give you one combined file client. It, it could be either a Python file or a TypeScript file. So you can use one of those and just use it on your front end. So what we're we going to do is we're gonna create a TypeScript file that we can use on our laptop. Uh, if you are using uh, if you want to use Python, you can use that. But since I'm using React, I'm going to choose a TypeScript client file. So, like I told you, it just combine the whole contract. Uh, the basic information will be included on the client client or uh, on my TypeScript file uh, with the new generated code. So uh, I can easily access it in my React app. So for creating the Python client file, you can use this one. Uh, for creating a TypeScript, uh, you can use this one. 
So that's where I shared here. This, this part. This is the uh, Argo Kit functionality to generate a client. So all you have to do is here you have to assign the paths where you want this new created file to be put in. Uh, you have to show the output should be inclined to this. You can name it anything you want. So we're going to go back to our backend first and we're going to create this combined file named client.ts. Backend. Okay. Let's so just say our, this one. I'll go to generate client. I'm telling it under my, since I'm on the calculator uh, folder, which is here, I'm, I'm telling it to uh, generate this client file under my asset files folder. I'm just giving it a pass here. So when I click this one, a client with this file will be created here. This. It's like the approval or question file is just include all the main information on your contract in this particular file. And you just can use this to call any f the function of the contract in your front end. So you don't have to worry about this code. It just combine everything that you need from your contract here. So you can access it on your front end. So let's just copy this file and go to our front end React app. So uh, the built-in or the when you create your React app using the Beaker or the Algo kit in it, it will uh, assign this folder itself. So under the contract, let's just delete this one. Under the contract file, just paste this new file you just created on your backend. This line do okay. So to check you first check if this client file is fetching all your functionality from the button and to do that uh, you can call it any, uh, by any means you want but i'm calling it this way so i created a new javascript uh, react component here so i access my client here like this and this is calculator client this is a functionality or it is a class name that export class name that's found here on your client is this one so i'm accessing it so uh, from this client is access this file so before we go any further let's check if it's actually fetching my uh, my contract in my front end so to check that i have put like this you have to use these configurations to read the contract i have put this one there's an app id and i'll go client so this is a configuration I have I put here. So I'm I'm accessing the upload client file. This one. So this up upload client should retrieve all the contract uh, functions. So to check that, go to your front end code. So uh, to run your front end, just run in the PM brand dev. Here, let's just refresh this one. This is calling contract. You can see it right on the console. This is con calling contract. I'm just uh, going to show you what the after up client shows. So if you click it here on the up client folder on the app spec, there is contract. You can find all your contract functionalities here. If you say if it's fetched correctly, you will see the your functional names here: the add, the minus, the read result. So you can now uh, say you have made an integration with your client and backend. So all you have to do is using uh, the React normal calling mechanism. We all we have to do is call these functions, and we have uh, we can create this application any any kind of application we want. So this is the first step. You have to check all the contract values or functions are fetched on your front end. So uh, how the main uh, package that React is using to read the algorithm backend contract is the Algo SDK. This is their package. This package is very important to have. So if you understand React through Beaker, it will uh, install it by default. 
but if not, I think they have, I think it's pip install, uh, no, I think npm run and go check the documentation. Uh, they have uh, the command to run the, to install the algorithm CDK. But if you install your React through the Baker framework, uh, it will be installed by default. So this is the, the main uh, function, uh, the main package that is helping us to connect with our algorithm backend. So we will use this often in the connection between the backend and the frontend. The algo SDK will read, uh, will make the connection. This is all this function, course are all configurations to connect where our backend. Uh, the main things you have to know is the algo SDK, the main thing you use, use and this kind of case file that you will copy paste on your front end would be the main uh, functionalities to make the connection with back end and front end. So after doing the connection, we can move now to creating the functions, reading the functions. So to read the functions, this is a function you're going to use, get it API method. So this API method will fetch the function name from the contract. So after client is the one that we already consult on our uh, console in the, in the front end. So by calling this part, you can fetch your function name, which means directly when you call this function, it will directly fetch or under, uh, get the function of your contract and address your question based on that. So I'm going to give you this code so you can go over it, uh, the connection to me. So basically, we're going to accept two parameters, A and B, for the add function here, A and B. And we're just going to sign it with our address. This is the sender, which means you will be the sender address. Uh, it will pitch when you connect on the front end. Uh, this is the active address here. Use wallet. We are using the view pin. Uh, local net address by default when you connect with the local net it will give you the first address that will be displayed so it will fetch that address automatically so you don't have to do much work here also so uh, when you we call the add function we will sign it by our address at the app id we will create it click here this function will create the app id we will call it so uh, the app id on the back end when we test we have to to create the app id we go through this steps right on the front end to make sure this app id is created we will use this functionality and what is the functionality the minus also do the same step like the back end um, i mean the, like the add function it will accept two values it will call for the minus function it will pass the functions I mean the parameters we will give in, we will give it from the front end to in this method arg arguments and it will return here after we execute this code or this uh, input that we gave him when we execute it it will be the result so the result is found under this uh, you'll get a JSON value so by using period you can find the return value here. So the same goes for that, and we are also put it for the read file for the read one for the reading the global state. I go to the same step and I execute finally this read the function and fetch the result and put it in, in user state so I can display it on the on my UI. I do that. So basically, here it is. Right here, here. I have the create app to create an app ID in, on my local net. And I have the add, the minus, the read. You can repeat the same step for multiplication in division uh, if you want. And this is the display part. So the value part will display all the outputs we get from our contract. So this value is a use state. I think by now you are familiar with the app use state. So I have already assigned new state for value in this value here. Value in state value. So the state value, every time we call function, add function, minus function, it will uh, change the value, value. So it will be different output on your front end. 
So now let's just run the front end and see what we have done so far. And make sure to run the algo kit local net start both on your back end and front end to test it on the dark flow and both on the front end here. So this connection, uh, when you uh, create your React through Beaker, it has options to connect either on the AlgoKit local net or Pera wallet, uh, DeFi wallet, I think. They have different options on the framework. So uh, you can use what you prefer. But for this demo, I'm going to show you how we can connection in the local net. So when we see, it automatically will give you an address. So just you don't have to do anything or like that. So we have to create an app uh, for this particular control. So we create a one. By default, the you don't have any password. So just say, OK, we'll give you an app ID. So now we have to add. So uh, for the front end, I didn't include uh, input values for A and B. So I, here, I pass the values that will be added in subtracted on the function uh, so we can test it from here so i have put to add five in five which will be 10 and i have put for my the calling the minus function of the contract 45 in 15. so when i click add it will automatically add five in five okay so let's just click add in order to, to put a password you don't have one just click okay Minus 45 in 15. Starting. Uh, if you want to read the value here, it would be 30. The current value would be 30. Right? So if I put 10, the global state of result will be changed to 10. So the results will be 10. Okay, so this is the small up. So if you want to see the same output, if you want to check, if actually the result value is the read value, which means the result, the global state value is 10, and you want to check it on the back end, on the, this part, all you have to do is just fetch this one, yeah, sorry, fetch the app ID, came for to three, right? So here, just edit this one, just to check your back end and front end are reading each other, you can check it like this one here too. So if the read result has to be 10, we are doing everything correctly. It will return to you can see. So uh, we can check it one more time for the minus one. Thirteen. So this one also has to return thirteen. So the same app ID is accessing the same contract. The deploy the same deploy contract. So now we have finalized our doubt. Okay, I'm gonna go back to you guys so I can. Yeah, so it's time for asking questions. Rudolf, you can continue. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have a couple of questions here. First of all, thank you for your presentation. Uh, my first question is to know uh, the main difference between algo kit and sandbox. There is no difference. They are the same. You can just use them interchangeably. Either you can use AlgoKit local net or you can use Sandbox. It's just any tool that they created uh, recently. They have the plan to remove Sandbox in the future entirely. So people all can move to the AlgoKit. Okay. Most give the same function. Yeah. It just AlgoKit has better framework to see the backend. Sandbox doesn't have that. You can ch check that on the terminal for sandbox. I didn't hear that last part. You were saying Agroke has uh, uh, a better yeah, things for the backend, so I don't understand. Yeah, when you test your backend on sandbox, you do that on your terminal. The dark flow part doesn't work for sandbox. So Agroke is more user friendly to just test your backend. Do you get me, uh, Rodolfo? 
Let's see. They, the main thing is they did the same function. Just in you to learn. Okay, Brahan, you can continue. Oh, okay, it was a good presentation. Can you can you show us how to use Argo Kit Explorer if possible? Uh, you can see my my screen. So the Algorithm Explorer, when you run Algorithm Explorer, explore here on your button. Algorithm Explorer. This is a command that you run when you enter it. It will uh, direct you. You have okay, to the, I forgot I here. Anyway, the point is when you click Algorithm Explore, it will automatically direct you to your Dataflow dashboard. So if the when you are for the first time, you don't have uh, you have to connect your wallet here. It says connect wallet. When you click connect wallet, it will give you different options: the Terra wallet, the Dev wallet. And uh, there are other two. So just for testing, you can use the dev wallet. And when you click the dev wallet, it will have an option to create a new wallet. Either create that, uh, create a new wallet. So I'm using this particular wallet to connect with my sandbox. So uh, you can just so connect that, or you can connect this one, whatever you want. So you have to have a balance. I have already this balance here. By default, they will give you value. Uh, other than uh, if you don't have a balance here. I think it, it, on the documentation there are faucets that should to get free money for testing purpose. So you can just click the copy the address and you can get a faucet value and you you will get an algo. So I think the first one on here has already has an algo, so you don't have to worry about that much. So I'm using the dev wallet to connect with my sandbox uh, inside my algo on my dev flow. So after that, all you have to do, what is, uh, all you have to do is this one, a by studio. So to test a new, new contract, you go to the ABI studio after you make sure you have a connection. And here, import ABI, like I told you in the process, you fetch your contract with JSON file, which will import all your entire functions of your contract here. Uh, and to test it, you have to make sure you have an app or you have to create an app to test your function. So just here, make sure you import the Eclipse approval and uh, how many ints or global variables or local ints you have on your dashboard. They do that. I fill this form and just create app. And the rest is like the I showed you before. Uh, is that clear, Brahan? My question was to to show us uh, how to use the Explorer uh, okay. in, in this platform. That yeah, that's that what I'm trying to do. Uh, I, I, okay. So the purpose of this Explorer is to test your I mean, if you do to do. I, I didn't catch that. Uh, so if you if you navigate to Explorer tab, we have transactions and things like that. So like, says that you can. Uh, I think you have that also. You can transfer from your one account to another account. So transactions.
So, Graham, could you repeat your question? Sorry. If you hear like anything, okay. Okay, anyone question? Thank you. Ikram, why do we need a backing club already in the Arbogit? The, the one that you created on the Arbogit is your backend. The, when you created the contract. I didn't understand your question, Ikram. Hello, Mohammed. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. So I think what Ikram and I have the same question. In the document, it says to build a backend using Flask or Fast API. So what? Okay. Uh, so that's. Yeah, this. Okay, I got, I got the question now. Uh, mm -hmm. This is one option to build your backend. You can also build your backing using Fast API on the the options I've mentioned on the document also. So if we were to go that way on the mention, I mean, on the way the document mentioned, we have to create, uh, I mean, the front end will connect to the backend and the backend will connect to the algorand. So that's the, that's the flow. Yeah. That's it. This is this one is a use Beaker framework to do the entire that flow. This is one option, but there are the, those options also can be done when you use Algorand. You have to have a wallet. They used to have my algo and algo signer wallet. It used to work in circle, but they have decided to remove those options. So I guess you have an option to use Pira wallet if you use Fast API and stuff like that. You, you need to have a, a wallet integration. So I, you have options on Pera Wallet, and there are, there are other two also. I forgot the names, but uh, you can use those if you go according to your recommendation. And you can also just uh, wait, whatever makes, whatever works for you. This seems an easier way, so we can use this. Yeah. To implement this, the project. Yeah, I choose that because this is an easier way. Mm. Okay. Uh, Rudolf, you can continue. Okay, uh, the flow is not yet clear in my mind. And so if you can say it again or explain a little bit. Uh, which one? Sorry. I mean, uh, the flow, uh, I mean, when I'm talking about the flow here, I'm talking about how we will connect uh, the, the, uh, the front end to the back end. Okay. I guess you can watch this tutorial again, but I guess I can show you the main parts that connect the button and the front end. There, there was a noise, so I didn't, didn't get what you said. Okay, I said uh, you can see this tutorial again to just uh, see the flow, but I guess I can show you the main thing that I did to connect the front end with the button. This is creating this client.ts file. And to create that client.ts file, you have this option on the here, this one, which will create you this file. And so the purpose of this file is combine every uh, information you need from your contract in one particular file. So since I'm using React, I have used to use the TypeScript form. And if you decide uh, on your front end, I don't know which framework you're going to use, probably it will be React. So I would recommend you use, uh, creating the client dot is through a TypeScript. Uh, so this is the function that you're gonna use to generate this file after you deploy your contract. All you have to do is just copy this file and copy paste it on your React. Here, on your app under contract, copy paste this one, and you call this file in any component, right? in any component here, like this, I'm calling the client.ts file here, the one that I created on my backend. Just when you call this one, and you make the configuration like this, it will wait, it will fetch every function that is contained or that's found in your contract on your front end. 
or after that, all you have to do is call those functions to make any kind of transaction. Is that clear, Rudolf? So uh, just see the tutorial again. Okay, is now okay. I I I read the tutorial as you said. Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah, that's clear. Uh, anyone with a question? When we use Gomit Prime. Okay. So when you do a uh, talk for Lilian, I'll go in it. I'll work it in it first. Uh, they have different frameworks to install on your system. So for this uh, particular tutorial, I, we use two things, the Beaker and the React. I guess I can show you again here. I'll go it in it. Here you have the Beaker for, develop, for uh, doing your contract, for developing your contract and React for installing React framework on your machine. So either you can use this one or use this one. After you click one of this, most of the answers would be yes. It will ask you different questions and uh, you will answer most of them are yes. So answer that. And I think there are also a full stack option here. I, I haven't tested it, but you can use that, I think, also. Uh, the full stack will probably have both the bad thing for creating the contract and the front end. Uh, so yeah, you have these options. I uh, please uh, so I would like to to request if uh, I I would request to upload the the video earlier because often we we don't have the video on YouTube and we stay for a long and so if you can yeah. upload this video we, as soon as possible so that we can we can quickly uh, watch it and learn something from that it will be very good okay so i will uh, transfer your request to tnxt so they can upload it as soon as possible uh i uh, if i can may like to question Okay, it's actually a question in general, not related to uh, algorithm. Uh, so I created my project yesterday on my Windows, and then I was trying to, I mean, be uh, pointing the React part of it. And I've already pushed the code to Vita. Sorry, Mila, could you increase your sound? Okay, how about now? Am I good? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so. Uh, I was trying to install AlgoKit now on my Windows, but it keeps giving me trouble. So uh, when I try it installing it on my um, Ubuntu virtual device or virtual environment, it it works. So uh, how do I go about the project? So can I clone my repository to my virtual uh, environment and then do this, or how can I do this? Yeah, could you access your repo on your Ubuntu file and on your web terminal like you did on Redash last week? Yes, I can do that. Yeah, that's the option you have. Windows really mm -hmm. is hard. It, it throws a lot of errors on Windows. Okay, thank you. Uh, is Pianata clear for you guys? I guess I, I want to show you how you can use Pianata, but if it's clear for everyone, I guess we can leave that one. No, no, show us. If you don't mind. No, I don't mind. So uh so on your pianata, just sign it, pianata.cloud. Uh you can find it on the internet. So after you sign up, all you have to do is upload here. If you have a file or folder, the image that you created. So what it pianata will do for you is it created this file, this CID code. This code is the one that you're going to use on your uh form or on your function to put it on your button. So, so I'm going to show you this this code. Assuming you have a file like this, and to see what file you have here or what image you have put it here, uh, this is their URL, this IPFS, this one. HTTPS, IPFS, uh, .io, slash IPFS, then just 
put you have to put your the ID key here. So this is a metadata that I put it under this key. Uh, the image is found through in this metadata here. So all I have to do is copy this. It's just choice of mine that I put it my file. But if you directly want to assign this value directly to the image, you can do that too. So if I just run this one, this is the image I put it here. So all you have to do is make sure you have created this file. For the, you don't have to create metadata like I did because it will. Uh, people have to go two steps to see their certificate. So just make sure this key is directly uh, assigned to your image. So when you upload the image, if you only upload an image, it will directly give that key for the image. But if you, uh, the one that I did is I just uh, give. In the middle, I have put it in my metadata file. The, the file is the one that this key is given. So don't do that. Just make sure uh, when you upload the image, the image directly get the CID file. So all you have to do is copy this. Let's assume this is the image of the source of key. Copy this CID file. And this is, you can find the code for creating a state on the documentation. This is Algorand for, for creating assets uh, in their uh, blockchain. So in the asset URL part, this is one of the parameters that it will require you when you create your asset. Here, uh, this asset dot current, this is uh, a code that's already been integrated on my React app. Uh, so I'm fetching uh, this file from my front end uh, for using use ref. I don't know if you know it, but just forget that one and just all you have to do is just that you have to put this key here like this so the asset url only need this key so like the same way that you fetch your uh, contract file or if you have uh, for example you see the global set are uh, results keep getting that when we minus or add file it give us the out right so when you fetch your data or your assets from your backing or from your contract from the Algorand blockchain, this the file that you're going to get under the asset URL, you will get this key. So to display, to display it on the front end, all you have to do is just fetch this on your front end. You just can be creative and use this one here. After you fetch this key from the backend, or which means from your block uh, algorithm backend, on the front end, but when you display your uh, certificate for the training, just make sure before this key, this URL is particular exists. So when automatically it will just display the image. In this, uh, like this one, here is how I displayed it on my front end here. I face this key from the backing from the blockchain and immediately I will put this in this variable and this variable contains a URL. This is the key that I fish from the backend. Um, so it displays for that for the training after they have uh, they get an approval on their opt-in for the certification. You can do it like this or you can do it also like this. Entirely you can just copy this including the HTTPS you can choose to put it here, but entirely the URL. There, you can put it like this also. Sorry. That's only like this. What's going on? Either you can put the key or you can put including the HTTPS, but this is not advisable as a blockchain developer or any developer because the main uh, concept of blockchain is transparency, right? So anyone in the blockchain can see this particular uh, URL and they can just access your, 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 your certification. So to hide that, it's better to just give them this hash key instead of just making sure you have the URL. 
uh, I think there are also options. You have two options to just hide the key also from other uh, developers uh, or other users or other hackers to accessing your key in Swedish application without your approval. Uh, but for this package, I guess you don't, for this project, you don't have to worry about that. So just make sure you put the key here to hide your uh, image certification. So is it clear? Uh, I'm sure, I hope I haven't confused you. <laughs> Uh, is it clear what I did on Pianata, how you can use it? Okay, Abdul Hamid. Does Pianata have an API so that we can send them uh, the image and then uh, it will return the hash key? Uh, could you repeat it? Sorry. So according to what I understood, Pianata is where We'll be storing the files, right? The, the, yeah. the certificate files, and we'll have some hash key returned to us. Yes. So, do they have the API in which we can call it from the backend? The Pinata? The, you want the Pinata to call it? I, I don't know. I don't. How, how, do how do we add to Pinata? You don't have to add Pianata on your blockchain. You just have to make sure you added your entire the certificate you created on Pianata first, and just pick that key and put it on your uh, on your code when you create an asset. So, so, we have, so we manually go to Pianata uh, on the website and then add the file manually there. Yes. The, the, that's the information I have. But if there are options to access their REST API, the Pianata, and do that, that's more advisable. Instead of just manually copy paste everything. So in that case, we are going to have to. Create... Sorry. Uh, can... Okay. So in that case, do we have to uh, create the certificate ahead of time uh, and then store them? And then when somebody wants to. Uh, have access to the certificate, we will just provide it or do we do it dynamically? Yes, you have to access it like that. I mean, I mean, Tien Academy has to first create this certification for its streams, right? First, so it has the image or yeah. the certificates first before any of this happens, before any connection with the trainee to approve and open the certification. The institution has the certificate image, so it, they can put it on the Pianata have the key for each certificate of the training and use that key to store the data on the blockchain. The whole point of using Pianata is because storing, we can directly uh, store the image URL on the blockchain, but blockchain is very expensive. We're now testing it with free money, but on the production, uploading an image is really expensive on the blockchain. It costs you it's the whole, it's to avoid that, uh, Payment is why Pianata exists, like a storage for Web3 blockchain for any of them. Ethereum also use Pianata. It just gives you the key. And, uh, using this particular key string is much easier than just deploying, uh, than storing the entire image on the blockchain. It's much less cheaper. Okay, thank you. So, uh, for Abdul Hamid, if there's an option to access your Pianata, at least on the front end, and just, uh, you have to access the REST API, the Pianata. If you can do that, it's, it's, it's great. It will be much better. Okay, Nasrallah, I think they're telling you if you can tell them about the piano SDK that you posted. Um, I don't know what they want me to ask about it. It's just there is a Node.js SDK for piano so you could go and read their documentation. Oh, great, thank you. But there is nothing for Python. That's the only thing I want to clarify. Okay, thank you. So she's telling you an, an option to run your Pianata. 
to npm package so i just see you have that option to check that out okay any other question i do i do have a question and uh, sorry um rahmat hmm? oh, okay in it's to one thing that Abdul Hamid um, really right and um, was talking about is that um, why we need to do Bianata manually? Is it like we need to only generate one image and just store that image, then distribute it to different students, or do we need to generate a dynamic image? Or what I mean by dynamic image is kind of like uh, Bianata dynamic. Uh, what, what was it? CID, CID. So, 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 how are we supposed to do that task? Is it only one certificate, but it's going to be like a different image? Or I, I do not understand. Yeah, if you understand the business logic, each training would have different certificates, right? So it would be different assets. So it depends how you decide to generate the, the image. Uh, let me ask you, using the OpenAI, how many images or how many, how many certificates have you guys created? No, no, what, what I meant by that is that one certificate image is going to be generated, but when since we're using an open CSV, then in that case, we can really write different student name. So my question to you is that, which means, let's assume we going to we have a uh, three student and uh, three student with three different name X Y Z. And X Y Z, do we need to store each X Y Z trainees into Bianata, or do we need to just store one generic image then give it to X Y Z? when they want to have, or when they're trying to obtain their uh, certificate. That's the only thing I did not understand. So uh, how you want to access this uh, image is your your personal judgment not or your personal So what Pianata is doing is whatever you give it, it will give it a hash. So if you give it a different image for different trainees, it will give you different hash for those different particular images. But if you give it one, it will give you one hash. So how you want to do this one is your decision. But different trainees should have different certificates. So for this project, I guess you can take three sample trainees and you can just make sure since those three trainees have different uh, certificates. So uh, when uh, I say different, same, same background but different names that's what i meant to say like yeah you can use this part like let me share the metadata that, that i showed you before um what is that use it for, so let me share you like this this one So here, when I create my Pianata, I have put in metadata. Say so you can just uh, give any information you want. So let's say for this image is for training number one, description on the train if you want, uh, country, everything that you want. So it would be, and you can put the image uh, of your Pianata here. So like this, you can give a metadata for the files. So, which means you have one metadata and you can access that one metadata and inside those metadata, each trainee has different image URLs for the certificate and you can access it like that, one option. Uh, is that clear or? Fine, uh, maybe later it will be clear when I get to it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, though. After you guys come. Yeah, I, it, it, it should be put on the store on Canada ahead of time, Abraham, it's like you said.
Okay, so uh, I think you should see this tutorial again, and if you have any questions, you can reach out to me on the Slack. Because it's new, it can be confusing. Yeah. Okay, thank you for being here. I hope the presentation is great. Uh, I guess we can end this meeting if you don't have any questions. Okay, we can stop the recording. I'm still sharing the screen. Okay, have a good night, everyone. Bye.